So this person has a very complex life cycle, which involves two hosts, which is their definitive host and then their individual host. So inside is this definitive host, the person undergoes a series of sexual and sexual reproduction, eventually leading producing the eggs, which is the oozes. The oozes are released in the, in the inside of uh, the oozes are released uh, in the field as in the form of unstable. <coughs> the days after the release of these unstable oozes, it, it transforms into what is called the spoiled oozes. And in this spoiled oozes are the infective state. And this is the state that is that infected with the oozes. So the intermediate host consists of virtually every one blooded mammals, including us human beings. So one of the, the three main ways that we could um, can, can try this uh, parasite, we, we can contract them through um, ingestion of um, cook or undercooked infected meat, or just, or just by drinking infected water. And also we can contract them, you know, they can also be transmitted through from, from the mother to the infant baby during pregnancy. So this right here is his liver that has been infected with a parasite. So the arrow is pointing to um, this arrow is pointing to this arrow is pointing to the parasite, you know, rapidly dividing. So this here, this space right here is actually dead cells. It's caused as a result of the rapid replication of the parasite. And <coughs> This, par uh, this right here is uh, the parasite tachyzoids. The tachyzoid is pretty much the rapidly growing stage of the parasite. That happens for, uh, in, an, uh, in an acute infection. So right after infection, it starts to rapidly grow and become and get simulated in, the, in, in, its host, uh, in its host. So when it enters the host, it creates what is called a parasitophobic vacuole. And this vacuole inside the cell is what I call the, the, command, the command center. Using this parasitophobic vacuole, it's able to um, get, take advantage of the cell and be infected with the cell, what it should be eventually taking over the cell. So after the active, after that, following acute um, infection, um, the, when in a, in a normal, in an individual with a normal uh, new system, the immune system detects the presence of this um, of the parasite in an acute stage. So when when the parasite recognizes this, it transforms to a state called the bradyzoid state. And this stage is the state that undergoes slow, uh, slow replication and forms and eventually forms a cyst. So as you can see right here, this is a um, these are different cysts. This a, this is a cyst from a stage. Differently, so, and this is an unstained cyst. Now, this cyst are the, the form or the stage of this parasite that that causes a lifetime infection. So, when it recognizes the immune system and it transforms to form a cyst, it hides or what I'm saying, for lack of a better word, it just it, um, infects different parts, different tissue parts. It usually infects um, brain tissues. And muscle tissues, and that is where it has a lifetime infection. So, how is this parasite linked with Alzheimer's disease? Recent studies have demonstrated this parasite to offer a host in the behavior of this host. So, in this picture right here is an article that I found on the um, on a BBC website that shows scientists that conducted a study. And in this study, they infected mice with parasites, with a parasite, with a state of the parasite. So they found that after the mice was infected with this parasite, they, they, they lost the appeal of the of uh, cat's urine. Then after that, they cleared the, the mice of infection. And then it still, uh, the mice still um, lost the appeal of, um, of the cat's. Of cat, uh, urine. 
and this suggests a permanent alteration of the of, of this host behavior from the from the parasite. Now, in view of this, there are many scientists or many studies have linked this uh, parasite to a number of neurodegenerative diseases, including Alzheimer's and schizophrenia. A more <coughs> convincing study that has closely linked this uh, parasite to Alzheimer's disease is the have demonstrated a higher seropositivity of anti T gonadal antibodies in um, Alzheimer's disease patients, and have seen that to be higher than age marked individuals. So, in view of this, our lab is looking at determining if this infe uh, T gonadal infection is really associated with Alzheimer's disease. And my part of the project is to test for the hypothesis that agents effective in treating Alzheimer's disease will also be effective at inhibiting the intracellular development of this parasite. So acetylcholine is a very important neurotransmitter. And this neurotransmitter is been associated with it's been associated with memory changes. So in the case of Alzheimer's patients, they have a, a very diff, uh, low number of um, as this neurotransmitter. And this, is, this has been attributed to the, um, <coughs> to the uh, de degenerative of the cells or uh, the death of the cells. And medication have not been able to cure Alzheimer's disease, but they have been able to slow the progression of this Alzheimer's. <coughs> so a, a, a medication that has been quite effective in managing this Alzheimer's disease has, is called the Nepazil hydrochloride. And this is what we chose for our <coughs> This, uh, this uh, uh, like I said, this uh, agent is what we use to manage it, uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease. And what it does is that it serves as um, an, an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. So basically, what it does is it inhibits the production of acetylcholinesterase. And acetylcholinesterase is, is an enzyme that is responsible for the hydrolysis of, uh, of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. So as you can see right here, this picture is indicating the hydrolysis, um, this enzyme hydrolyzing the acetylcholine. So in that case, it's going to lead to a very lo a low number of acetylcholine in um, in an individual. And this is the case of uh, Alzheimer's disease patients. So basically, this drug is inhibit the production of this, and that causes a, uh, a higher number of uh, of, uh, of the acetylcholine in the in a, in Alzheimer's, in, um, in Alzheimer's uh, patient, thereby improving their memory gain. So, in order to test for this, um, for this in order to test for this hypothesis, we use the conventional plate acid system. And this plate acid system is used is widely used for to test for drug activities. So, we populated the human pigmented uh, retinal epithelial cells in a 24-word plate. Now we chose this, human, this type of human cell for one main reason, because infection of this, of uh, clinical manifestation of, us, uh, of T. gondii uh, is usually uh, eye infection. So this will provide us a good model to generalize, to generalize the, um, a good model for these studies. So after, after growing this cell in the wells, we infected the cells with the Irish strand of the, of, the, of the parasite, which is the, and we always we use the tachyzone because that's the, good, the fastest growing stage of the parasite. And that's what we want to have. Using those titrations, we determined the um, concentration of the drugs that we needed for our experiment. And then we used 0 0.1 millimolar, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.005 and 0 0.001 millimolar concentration. So the drugs were applied, and in this study was repeated, repeated five times for the 96-well plate and eight times for the 24-well plate over the course of last semester, and we're still doing it this semester. So as you can see, um, the control for the control we had only the the cells, the human cells, and the 
and the tapizoids mix. And then for the rest of the rest of the of the wells we have the drug treatment being applied to them. So our results showed a very <coughs> high lesion prevention rate in the 0.1 millimolar concentration. As you can see the control had no um, the control had no um, job of being applied to it. So the tachyzoids have ample opportunity to cause whatever destruction they, they wish for the for the uh, to the cell. So you can see that this has about 60% production um, destruction rate. And this is barely, you can barely tell whether they really um, cause any form of destruction. And for the 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and 0 0.005 concentration, so we saw a moderate um, lesion prevention rate. That means by the time those, the, the drugs started uh, working, there have been some form of destruction um, by the by the by the parasite, and you know we can see some progression from 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.01 to 0 0.005. But then when you go to 0 0.001, um, it's pretty much ineffective. Had a very weak inhibition <coughs> and, um, uh, lesion prevention rate. So in order to determine the the ratio or the amount or the severity of infection between the control and the, the treatment, we did a study that used, uh, that in which we drew each of the human cells on the cover slip and then later stain it uh, using Gessner stain. So basically, we determined that um, for the 0 0.1 millimolar concentration, con concentration there are fewer Host cells were infected um, by the parasite, and then so and then we have a large number of uh, host cells being infected by the parasite in the control. So a ratio between this uh, infection, a ratio between the control and the treatment was about one to five, which is the same to, um, two. So this this is a control. You see how like. The parasite, you know, when I follow it, right, following infection, they, they divide essentially using a process called endog endogeny, and this enables them to rapidly um, divide and attack as many host cells as possible. And then, but um, for the 0 0.1 millimolar, the the drug uh, is is much effective enough to prevent um, the spread of this parasite eventually be to very few. So our study, we found that uh, denapazil can inhibit the development of the uh, humans, uh, of T. gondii human cells. Now this study is very significant because it provides a new way, a new first step in terms of um, developing um, a new Treatment for uh, uh, a new treatment against Tuscoplasma uh, gondii because the current drugs there's no drugs for this parasite against this parasite. We also understood that the um, nephrosol is an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. So the question we are faced at the moment is why does this work? And we're trying to see whether 